Good afternoon. In this chapter, we're going to talk about wired local area networks. Uh, recall at the start of this course, we define local area network. Uh, essentially, a local area network is one wherein the geographical coverage is uh, relatively small. An example of a local area network are the network in our PC labs and networks in uh, computer shops. Now, of interest in, to us in this chapter is the Ethernet local area network. And we're going to focus on this topic. Now, in data communications and networking, normally you would like uh, different manufacturers to be able to develop devices that will be able to communicate with each other. And uh, in order to do that, as discussed in the earlier discussions in this course, we need standards and one of the standards that are related or relevant to local area networks is the IEEE standards for local area networks and it started with project 802 which basically uh, the purpose is to set the standards to enable communication among equipment from a variety of manufacturers. Now, the standards does not seek to but to provide a way of specifying functions to the physical layer and data link layer of major LAN protocols. Remember that OSI is the standard. We have seven layers and the physical layer, data link layer, network layer, etc., etc. And in the IEEE 802 standards, the data link layer is divided into the logical link control and the media access control. In our theoretical discussions on the functions of data link layer, uh, the, equiv uh, the equivalent of, uh, of data link control is logical link control in the 802 standards. Now this figure here illustrates the side-by-side uh, -side comparison between the OSI reference model and the IEEE standard. At the lowest layer, you can see here that the transmission medium is uh, the lowest, then the physical layer in the OSI reference model is mapped to different uh, physical layer implementations for wired networks. Uh, for example, uh, this one, Ethernet, uh, you have uh, several physical layers, which we'll talk about later. Then we can also have a token ring physical layer, and we also have token bus physical layer. Remember, uh, in the media access control, we talk about uh, token passing as one of the mechanisms for uh, media access control. And those are important uh, here. Uh, but we'll not go into the details of this token ring and token bus. We focus on the Ethernet part. Now, moving on to the data link layer, uh, as mentioned previously, the data link layer in the IEEE standard is divided into two sub-layers. We have the media access control sub-layer, where in this case we have three, and the logical link control sub-layer. And then you have the upper layers. Now the function of the logical link control are the following, flow control, error control, and framing. It provides one single data link control protocol, we call DLC, 
for all IEEE LANs. So, regardless of the underlying media access control protocol, the LLC is the same for all uh, MAC or MAC sublayers. This can provide interconnectivity between different LANs because it makes the MAC sublayer transparent. What this means is that, uh, for example, in ICS, we use the Ethernet uh, standard. Now, uh, in BioSci, for example, they use the uh, token ring uh, physical layer. So they have a, to a token ring network in BioSci. For a computer in ICS to communicate, to be able to communicate with uh, a computer in BioSci which uses token ring map, then the LLC will be able to provide that uh, to, make, to, to be able will be able to the LLC will be able to provide uh, that capability of allowing my computer or a computer here in ICS running on an Ethernet network to communicate with a computer in BioSci running in a token ring network because they have the same uh, LLC. So as part of the framing, so we have the several fields. Uh, the header fields are similar to the HDLC that we discussed before. Uh, and we have the DSAP or the destination service access point and a source service access point. Okay, so basically this characterizes the relationship uh, of the protocols above okay? this uh, logical link control or basically the network layer protocols. The purpose of LLC is to provide flow and error control for the upper layer protocols, specifically the network layer. However, in the case of the internet or in the case of IP or the internet protocol, it does not use the LLC sublayer. So it goes directly to the media access control sublayer during communication. So this is how uh, the relationship between an HDLC frame and a MAC frame. So we have the HDLC frame here on the left. And uh, what happens is uh, the, this frame is divided into two. So you have the MAC frame here. And then you have the payload, which is basically the LLCPD, which is the protocol data unit at above the MAC sublayer. Now, regarding the media access control sublayer, it defines the specific uh, access method. So, remember the purpose uh, of multi media access or multi uh, media access control sublayer is. Uh, to determine who gets to control the link, especially when the link is shared among stations. And the media access control sublayer also handles framing. Now, let's look at the specific standards for uh, Ethernet, IEEE 802.3. The very first standard is the standard Ethernet or 802.3, which is the original uh, Ethernet. It was created in 1976 at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. Now, the Ethernet uh, standards, or 802.3, has undergone uh, several modifications for the purpose of uh, improving it. Originally, the standard Ethernet can support a data rate or a bit rate of 10 Mbps, then uh, further improvements led to uh, various uh, improvements in terms of data rate wherein at the latest we have a 10 gigabit ethernet wherein it can support 
up to 10 gigabits per second. So this uh, tree here illustrates the evolution of the Ethernet or the IEEE 802.3 standard. Let's take a look at the frame format of the standard Ethernet. Uh, the frame format is shown in this figure here and it starts with a preamble bits which is uh, the preamble field which is 7 bytes or 56 bits of alternating zeros and ones for synchronization. So recall that uh, uh, bit oriented protocols we need to specify the start and the end of a frame so somehow uh, you have here the preamble bits which uh, is used for that purpose. Then we also have the start of frame delimiter SFD which is one byte and this is the value for this start of frame delimiter to mark the start of a frame. Then the destination address and the source address. Remember that in the data link layer addressing is required especially if you have a multipoint link and the size of this field is 6 bytes. Then you have the length or type, the type of the upper layer protocol or number of bytes in the data field. So normally the value here is a value that specifies the protocol above it, in the case of the internet, the IP, IP uh, internet protocol value. Then you have the data which carries the data encapsulated from the upper layer protocols which has a minimum of 46 and a maximum of 1,500 bytes for the data. And then for error detection, we have the CRC, which is CRC32 specifically. Now, the standard Ethernet has a minimum and maximum frame length. Now, the idea is for having a minimum uh, frame length is that this is needed for CSMA CD. Remember that in CSMA CD, as a frame is being transmitted, the station should continuously monitor if there is a, a collision in the link. And uh, based on the properties of the link and the distance covered, then uh, there should be a minimum length in order to be able to uh, perform collision detection. And uh, another one is there is also a specific uh, maximum length, frame length. The purpose of that is to reduce the buffer size and prevent the monopoly of the link. So for example, uh, for the standard Ethernet, the minimum frame length is 512 bits or 64 bytes. This will allow CSMA CD to be effective and for the maximum frame length, we have 1518 bytes. But in modern uh, uh, iterations of Ethernet, we have what you call uh, jumbo frames which can exceed uh, this maximum uh, frame length. For, of course, for it to enhance the, uh, the data rate. Now, in order to connect to the standard Ethernet, we need to have a device that will that supports the standard, and usually it is the, a device called network interface card. Now, the network interface card is connected to your computer, and uh, usually in the PCI bus, and then a driver uh, for the card is created that interacts with the operating system that, which, that allows you to. Uh, send and receive data over the standard Ethernet network. There's a six byte, it's as a six byte uh, physical address written in hex with colon between bytes. So this is an example uh, uh, network interface card address. The destination address can be unicast, multicast, or broadcast, and the least significant bit of the first byte determines the time. And broadcast has all 
So examples, uh, this address here is unicast address because uh, the second uh, byte here is uh, even and this one is a multicast address because this address is odd. Uh, this, this byte value is odd. And this is the broadcast address, all ones. Now when sending the frame to the address, the, the address is sent left to right, byte by byte, each byte, right to left, bit by bit. So for example, in this, in this uh, address, okay, so you have uh, 7, 7 will be sent in this manner, and then uh, 4 will be sent in this manner. So and so on. So that's how uh, this address is sent across the link. Uh, in terms of uh, persistence mechanism, so it uses one persistent, meaning uh, once the once the link is uh, detected to be idle, it immediately sends the a new frame. So the slot time is equal to the round trip time plus the time to send the jump sequence or the jump signal. Uh, recall that in CSMA CD, once a collision is detected, the transmitting station should send a jump, a jump signal that informs all others, other stations that indeed there, happen, there occurred a collision. So the time required for a station to send is 512 bits. So it's about the slot time is 51.2 uh, microseconds. So why you have 512 bits slot time? The sender needs to be aware that a collision has occurred before it's too late, and the sender needs on, needs to listen only for a collision only during the time the first 512 bits are sent. Uh, normally, we, we, we define a collision domain. A collision domain is the maximum network length. Okay? So, gaano ka haba yung, uh, yung network? It de is dependent on the propagation speed in the particular medium, normally 2 times 10 to the 8 uh, meter per second. And the maximum network length is equal to the propagation speed multiplied by the slot time divided by 2. So for the traditional internet, okay, the maximum length is 5,120 5, meters, so about 5 kilometers. However, because of the properties of the link and other, uh, other uh, possible, uh, uh, possible occurrences in the link, uh, the suggested uh, collision domain is about 2.5 kilometers okay, due to delays and uh, sending the jump signal. So, how are the standard ether how is the standard Ethernet uh, implemented in the physical layer? So, it uses digital signaling baseband at uh, 10 Mbps and these are the common implementations so you have 10 base 5 10 base 2 10 base T and 10 base F there are there is a standard for naming uh, this so uh, 10 here would pertain to the data rate so 10 Mbps base here is baseband baseband modulation and then 5 is the distance 5 kilometers for 5 uh, coax uh, 2 kilometers uh, thin coax uh, T transmission media type for uh, twisted pair and we have F for uh, fiber now uh, the twisted pair uses a star topology uh, fiber also uses star topology while the original uh, base 5 and base 10 base 2 uses bus topology. For encoding, uh, it uses the Manchester encoding. So if you will recall, what is Manchester encoding? So 
So Manchester encoding, there is a mid-bit transition for synchronization, which is twice the bandwidth of NRG. So as you can see here, the graph. So the Manchester encoding, zero, okay? And then transition, one, okay? zero. So there is always a mid-bit transition, which is used for synchronization. So just a further uh, difference or uh, implementation. So you have uh, 10 base 5, bus topology. Uh, the maximum length of the coax, is this is bus topology, must not exceed 500 meters. And the maximum of five segments connected with repeaters. So uh, sorry, uh, it should be 500 meters, not five, uh, five kilometers. It should be 500 meters. Okay, so this is an illustration of uh, standard uh, Ethernet thick net. Then thin net, uh, basically it has uh, uh, thinner uh, coax but still uses bus topology. So the length cannot exceed 185 kil kilometers, so it was rounded to 200 meters. For the twisted pair, so it uses a star topology and collisions happen in the hub. So collisions will happen here. So the length is uh, 100 meters. So from this to this, uh, it should be 100 meters. For the fiber, uh, 2 kilometers is the maximum length. So here you have two. Uh, uh, two lines okay, for uh, send in PC. So in summary, the standard Ethernet uh, uh, has these uh, properties. The media for 10 base 5, we have uh, thick coax, 10 base 2 thin coax, uh, UTP to fiber here, uh, length uh, 500 meters, 185 meters, 100 meters, and 2 kilometers. Uh, line coding, we have uh, Manchester, Manchester, Manchester. Okay, so we'll stop here.